What was the best moment of the Mariners magical 2022 season? Who was their unsung hero and which player came back the most improved? We'll answer that here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Friday, October 21st, 2022. This is Ty Dan Gonzalez and Colby Patnode for the Locked On Mariners podcast brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered all season long with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and leave a five star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. The link, as well as our social accounts, is in the description below. On the show today we'll be handing out more team awards to this 2022 mariners ball club including most improved unsung hero and the best overall moment from this season but before we get into all of that colby you have an announcement to make yeah um it's time for us to give you guys more free stuff which is i know the reason you listen to us in the first place and and so it's time to grease some palms again and and uh, get things going uh, you know, we, we, uh, we want to use this off season to build, uh, build the following, build a listener base and, uh, get more, more people listening to the show. And so hopefully this helps. So, uh, what I've kind of decided to do since I'm the only one contributing to this hint, hint, um, is that we're going to tier the giveaways. So basically the promotion is going to last between today and the end of the winter meeting. So you have almost two months here to, to get this done, but basically, we're going to uh, we're going to count uh, subscribers uh, and also followers on Twitter um, and incorporate those into some of these. So let's just start right off the top here. When we get to four thousand uh, YouTube subs, uh, we will go ahead and we will give away this uh, autographed Taylor Dollard card. Ooh. Not sure if you can see that. If you guys aren't watching on YouTube, I'm sorry, but Ty can can vouch for these. It's autographed pretty. Taylor Dollar card <laughs> at four thousand. When we get to 4,500, if we get to 4,500, I'll give away this very nice autographed and numbered Taylor Trammell. Ooh. Card. Yes. So there's that. If we get to 4,500 uh, subs and 3,000 on Twitter, uh, at LO underscore Mariners, I will get go ahead and give away this numbered autographed Jared Kelnick card. Wow. Mm-hmm. And if we get I to love five, that one, there you go. And well, you might want to save it for this one. And if we get to 5,000 subs on YouTube and 3,000 uh, Twitter followers, I will give away the one, the only, or one of the only big dumper Cal Raleigh autographed rookie cards right there for you. But it doesn't stop there because. I don't want to do this, but I will. We get to, if we overtake, uh, I don't, I think it's locked on Astros as the number one uh, podcast, number one podcast on YouTube in the locked on network, that is in terms of uh, subscribers. I will give away network. Yes, yes, yes. I will give away my beloved, one of only 70 cards like it. My beloved Mike Cameron autograph card. Well, I think we're about 1,800 away. So there you go. Um, I'll put all this down below, but basically every tier we knock off, I'll give away one of the cards. We have eight weeks to get it done. Um, we'll see how many of these cards I give away because I have no issue keeping some of them for my personal collection. Just try me. So, yeah, and I'll tell you what. I'll do you one better. If we get to 10,000 subs, which we won't, which is the only reason I'm putting it out there, graded – autographed logan gilbert card oh it, it has a 9.5 gym it's a 9.5 gym mint from beckett the autograph was given a solid 10 so there you go i know all i'm not right. giving away that gilbert card but i really hope i give away all these other cards except for maybe the cal raleigh and the mike cameron but i will if you guys get it done so there you go just uh, start subscribing to the youtube channel and follow us on twitter if you haven't already and you'll be entered to uh to win one of these cards or maybe multiple. Let's, Who knows? Maybe you get randomly picked go. twice. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Anything is possible. Let's go. All right. 
some mm-hmm. nice uh, some nice prizes there. So be sure to subscribe uh, to our YouTube if you're watching us right now. It's right below our faces. Uh, and uh, if you uh, want to follow us on Twitter, if you got a Twitter account, do that. LO underscore mm-hmm. Mariners. Do it right yes. now. And also you follow should. us on Twitter. It, it, it won't help your chances, but do it anyway. <laughs> it our, helps uh, us. Our ads, yeah, it helps us personally. So, you know, my at is right below my stupid little face, and uh, Colby's at is under his stupid little face. So, with that, anybody out of want the way, a Daniel Vogelback autograph card? We'll we'll do that when we or get to Justin Dunn. <laughs> <laughs> the the Vogelback card is at thirty nine fifty, so we're very close. No, I'm I'm, I'm just not... kidding. I'm just <laughs> yeah, kidding. Right. Colby's um, like, no, Colby will but... make me pay for the shipping on that now that I've done. Yeah, that. <laughs> you will. It only makes sense. I paid for everything else. Anyways, uh, mm. should make a little. Graphic I, I might have. I might have some plans. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. I should. I should make a graphic. All right. Next like, time, uh, when we yeah. w- w- when we do our show Monday. on Monday, I'll, I'll make yeah. a I'll make a graphic laying it all out for you guys. Yeah. All you guys uh, need to know though is just subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter. You'll be entered to win, however many absolutely. cards we give up. Don't worry about how many you need. Just just do it if you haven't already, and then you'll be entered. Hell yeah! All right, uh, and like I said, I might be working on a couple of uh, giveaway ideas as well. Wink, He's wink. not. Hand to- I am. I am. I He's am. He's not. All right. We've already used up six minutes to talk about the giveaways here, so let's uh, let's quickly. Uh, I think this one can be pretty quick. Uh, our first award, best moment of the year. I think there's a couple of very obvious options here, but to you, what was the best moment of 2022 for the Seattle Mariners ball club? Steven Souza Jr. getting DFA'd. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh. Dylan Moore. To worst the worst moment of the year: Steven Souza Jr. accidentally hurting existing. a fan in Toronto. Yeah, or just existing. Yeah, existing on this roster. Yeah, that was pretty <laughs> bad. Uh, no, best moment for me. Uh, it's pretty interesting because I saw a couple of them live. Uh, but I think for me, it's going to be the Cal Raleigh home run to uh, tend the drought, the the rainmaker, the drought breaker, whatever we're calling that home run. Uh, I think that's probably the best moment. Not only is it, you know, the breaking of the drought, but for me, you know, being in the ballpark and and all that certainly adds to it. Um, And, you know, it's, it's one of the, it's now become maybe the second most iconic moment in franchise history after the double. I mean, it's, it's up there at the very least. So uh, I think I have to go with, with the, uh, the drought breaker, the rainmaker, whatever the heck we're calling that home run. Um, Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, to me that that's number one. But I think there are several like legitimately good answers to this one, so I'm interested to hear what you say. I mean, Not I'm really. biased. I'm bi. Well, yeah, I know, but I'm biased, and I have to go with the comeback in Toronto, Wrong. being there, experiencing that. It was one of the greatest moments of my sports watching life. So yeah, I mean, I just kind of have to go with that. Uh, you know, sitting there when it was eight to one and just kind of like, all right, well, you know, trying to figure out if I wanted to go to the game or not on Sunday and doing all that and just kind of enjoying my time kind of, you know, like, especially if I wasn't going to go, like, this is the last baseball game I'm going to go to for the year. So I'm just kind of soaking it in, even though that the Mariners are getting their ass kicked and, uh, and just watching it all kind of unfold. And, um, but to me, the best moment from that whole night was when, all the Mariners fans went down near the field. And unfortunately I was still up in the 500 section. Cause on my side of the ballpark, they had the, the ramps blocked off um, to get down. But the, the, the let's go Mariners chant that broke out mm-hmm. and being able to be a part of that. I mean, I haven't been able to be around that many Mariners fans since I was 11 years old. The last time that I went to Safeco field. So yeah, that was pretty special for me getting to experience that and getting it- to enjoy that. It sounds like to me, Ty, that you just didn't want it enough uh, to be mm. down there. Uh, you just let a couple of a couple of barricades stop you. <laughs> Amateur. I mean, uh, it's it's true, it's true. But you know, the other thing though, I was remembering in the back of my mind that you know I had a show to do and I had a, an audience to uh, to to appease really? here. Yeah, so I I did it for you guys, of course. I did it for you guys uh-huh. and. <laughs> That's why, you know, the night before it took you four hours to get back home and you were, let's just say, less than 100%. Um, Look, I celebrated, I, celeb- I celebrated game one and game two after game one. I, I must yeah. have known. What, what did I know? Uh-huh. What was I cooking? What was I cooking? Yeah. 
Uh, um, I, think, I think some uh, some other nominees, probably the the comeback win against the Braves, uh, Julio's yes. home run, followed by Gino's home run, uh, obviously the, the first playoff, the brawl, yep, the first playoff game in Seattle in, in 21 years, and, and, you know, Felix throwing out the first pitch and just 18-inning ball game and all 0-0, mm-hmm. and, you know, Brash striking out Altuve. There's like six or seven in that game alone that, that you could put. Uh, Julio's home list. run derby? Yep. Like mm-hmm. another great uh, another great moment in the season. Uh just any moment from the 14 game winning streak really yep. like uh, there were so many great moments that made up this season and I'm really interested to hear what our listeners uh think about this. What was their favorite moment of the of the year? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're doing that, let me tell you about Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered all season long with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. It is the number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season. Find all of the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all your sport wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. It is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online is where the game starts you're listening to the locked on mariners podcast thank you so much for making us your first listen so we talked about the best moment of the year now let's get a little more into the uh, individual players that help make some of those moments let's start with unsung hero who was the most under the radar contributor on this team who deserves a ton of praise that maybe did not get as much as they should have this year yeah, that's kind of an interesting question because I feel like the answer most people will come up with is Sam Haggerty, but because most people come up with that answer, you're singing his praises, which doesn't make mm-hmm. you an unsung hero. So it's kind of a, eh, it's a little bit of a catch 22 there. Cause I do feel like Haggerty's the easy answer, but again, I, I feel like we've talked about Haggerty quite a bit and he's gotten a lot of praise for his, uh, for his contributions to this team. Um, you know, and you kind of go around and the Mar- Mariners really didn't have anybody that kind of came out of nowhere, uh, you know, in terms of role and, and uh, you know, just kind of took a job away from somebody. It didn't really happen. And, and when it did, you know, there was a lot of praise for that. So I think I'm going to go with maybe a bit of a stabilizing force in the bullpen, maybe somebody who didn't get quite enough uh, credit for how good he was. I think there's a couple guys in the bullpen you could give this award to. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and give it to Matt Festa who uh, was pretty darn good uh, in the middle innings this year and just never really got a ton of love. Uh, I think there were a lot of times we were just like, oh, yeah, you just send Festa down, whatever. You can have him in AAA. I, I think you could also give this award to Penn Murphy. Uh, and I think, honestly, you might even be able to give it to Eric Swanson uh, because uh, Munoz uh, stole pretty much all the headlines out of the bullpen and, and Seawald, to a lesser extent, did the same. So I, I think it's one of those three guys for me, but I'll go with Festa because I just feel like people don't, uh, recognize how how good and how important he was. Uh, sometimes I even feel like the Mariners <laughs> didn't realize that with based on how they used him. So uh, I'll go Matt Festa here just because I feel like Sam Haggerty is like too mainstream to be the answer to this question now. You besmirched his name all year long, Colby. My unsung hero is Dylan Moore. Yeah, I've muted Ty because he's not going to get away with that, but... <laughs> Nope, nope, nope. I've unmuted myself. You cannot, you cannot silence me on my own show. No, uh, Dylan Moore definitely deserves to be in a conversation, like towards yeah. the end of it. But sure, yeah, that's that's fine. <laughs> All At those big strikeouts. Our- by the way, it, it, it popped up a bunch of messages that I had been muted. But at first, I thought our stream like completely died, and I was just like, ah, oh. like the the utter like no. deflation of that just set in for a second. And I just, I'm I'm very glad that was not the case, and you were just uh, see, yeah. What's what's yeah. interesting about that pick is that Ty made that pick to try and like poke at me, and he mm-hmm. just left his boy Matt Brash out there to hang and dry, which goes to show. Ty doesn't really like Matt Brash all that much. I mean, he's gonna be was Matt he's gonna Brash be an unsung fine. hero though. Yeah. Everybody I in that mean, bullpen not named Andres Munoz is really. I mean oh, I was singing his Ryan praises. Barocchi. I was singing his praises. Personally. I was singing personally. Dylan Moore's a... praises. What are you nuts? Nobody's a bigger Demo fan than me. Like I don't know what you're uh-huh. talking about. So yeah. So um, Demo, 
of course, mm-hmm. had some struggles against righties, but overall, slashes 224, 368, 385 with a 126 WRC plus. He was worth 2.1 F4. Mm-hmm. He walked 13.3% of the time. Did strike That's out a lot. Well, let's just let's just let's just ignore the let's ignore the strikeouts. But uh, let's ignore what makes him a bad player. Exactly, exactly. But you're you're like two, you're like two inches away from the whole like. I think he's a really good hitter if he changes his entire swing. <laughs> Uh, logic so no, uh, all right. no no i'm not i'm not like a certain someone that potentially co-hosts a uh, show with a friend of the show uh not not there yet not not there yet maybe dipping a toe has he maybe, been on this show he has been on this show yeah he has been on okay. this show Come not on the video of, not since we started doing video right though. yeah but he has been on the show we need to get him back on the show we're talking about jason a churchill of course and joe doyle uh Uh, but yeah but we need now i was talking about joe but yeah but we we need church on the we need church on the show uh again Mm. and uh i don't know if joe will do the show (laughs) (laughs) we're getting too we're we're getting way too unhinged here let me talk about dylan moore okay all right let me let let, let me live here colby let me live don't Mm -hmm. don't mute me again stop 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 trying to overhaul the show all right dylan moore though Mm -hmm. really why i i have him as my unsung hero he just did everything that this team asked of him right he played several positions at at least an average rate or above uh and was able to make some great contributions on that front offensively speaking against left-handed uh pitchers he was fantastic uh he's just he's a great player in terms of you know a guy that can just come off the bench that you can use in in multiple situations he's just a do-it-all he's a swiss army knife it's uh, you have to have guys like dylan moore on your roster and D- Demo, I know you hate him. I know you hate him, Colby. But he does help. He does help in a, in a big way, both defensively and offensively in certain matchups. He's just a great guy to have on your roster. He's a great 26 man to have on your roster. He fits uh, in that way, in that role uh, immensely. And uh, yeah, he's like as much as you hate him. Real ones, real ones love Demo. Real ones love Demo. I don't hate him. I think he's a bad player. There's a difference. And second of all, let's never use the words great player and Dylan Moore in the same sentence because that is a slap in the face to all the really great players. So watch yourself. He's a great player in that role is what I was saying, Colby. No, you said he's a great player player who plays in this role. No. I meant it as he's a great player in that role. Is he a top five utility player in baseball? No. So Let's see. Let's there see. you go. The answer is no. He's not. He great. should have. He should. He should have had a. He should have been nominated for the Gold Glove for the utilities. At what position? For the did utility Dillamore position. Play, did Dylan Moore play much second base this year? Let's see. Because I feel like he was mostly outfield, and then he played a little bit of shortstop. Like I'm sure he played some second and some third, but he played 64 yeah. innings at second. He played yeah. 104 innings. Uh, 174 innings at shortstop. He played just two innings at third base, but he also played all those innings in the uh, division series at third base in the last game in game three. So yeah, um, yeah, he's a he's just a, a you know he's just a do it all guy who does whatever the team asks of uh, asks of him, and he does it more or less all well, um, except for hit right handed <laughs> pitching. That's really his deficiency. Uh, Thankfully, but, you know, righties only make up seventy percent of all pitchers, so. Whew. Dodged a bullet there. Here he goes again. Here he goes again. (laughs) All right. I I never saw Dylan Moore do anything good at any of the games I was at, so maybe that's why. Mm, Of course, of course, of course. I mean, no, that's not true, actually. That's not true. He he did. uh, With you in attendance, he hit a home run against – who was it? You can't even remember. There was a – no, there was a game that you went to, and I remember tweeting that – Cleveland? I remember so tweeting Sunday that he did Cleveland. I was like, of course he did it in front of, uh, in front of Colby. I remember tweeting that. I just, I can't remember what game it was. Someone will help me. I think Someone it was Cleveland. He hit the three run home run off of, uh, was it Quantrill or police sack or whatever. And the Mariners won like four to one. It was the day after they, they blew the Ichiro game. And we oh, were forever yeah. robbed of the Jake Lamb game. Damn you, Andres Munoz and Jose Ramirez. Anyways. Yeah, that was uh, – 
definitely not the best moment of the season for sure up there with the worst moment of the season frankly i mean worst moment of the season if we were actually handing out that award it's blowing a, an 11 to two lead to uh, kansas city the royals yeah. remember that one remember that one? yep that's a little throwback there the royals the freaking royals really yeah God, that was just ah, oh God. Even thinking about it now has me incensed. All right, let's uh, let's talk about most improved, uh, most improved player going from twenty twenty one to twenty twenty two. Who had uh, the biggest step forward this year for the Mariners? Again, I feel like the easy answer here is Cal Raleigh. Um, yeah. Is that too easy? I mean, come on. Last year, Cal Raleigh was tr- atrocious. He was so bad at the plate. He wasn't very good behind it, and even we saw him this year. For a little bit. Yeah. He wasn't good at all. And then he comes up and then he's like the fourth best catcher in baseball when he comes back. Yeah. I mean, that has to be most improved. I don't know who else you'd give it to. Like me, me saying else? it was more about I don't I, I think there's another obvious answer. But you're you're going with Cal we you're going with Cal. Yeah, I think so. I can't think of anybody else who it would be. It's certainly not Kelnick. It's certainly not Haniger or JP or Frazier or Gino or France or it's not Gino. It's not Gino. No, it's not Gino. How is it not Gino? Gino's done it before. I mean, he's done it before, but he was only bad. like two years ago. He was bad. Yeah, but it was only like two years ago. Yeah, but still, it's not I like think he, that's a. It's that's a, that's. No, a, it's this not is Gino. for from 2021 to 2022, though. Okay, then it's still Cal Raleigh. I mean, all right. Cal me, Raleigh wasn't major league quality at I mean, anything. He, that's true. Last that's year. very much true. That's very much true. I mean, at least Gino hit home runs last year. At least Gino. I mean, and part of it is like apples and oranges because Gino was playing shortstop last year, which, mm. yeah, like obviously yeah. that was a bad idea. But yeah, there was obviously a lot going on with Gino the last couple of years that kind of derailed things for him. But to me, to you know that can kill someone's career right you just things continue to snowball and you're just out of the league at that point and it seemed like gino was like heading that way that all signs were pointing to to him just like his career had fallen off of a cliff but to come here stick at third base and that's really the big thing for me was the improvement defensively as we covered yesterday he was robbed of a nomination for the uh, third base gold glove award, especially when Ramon Urias, who had a good year, don't get me wrong, but when Ramon Urias is being nominated over uh, Gino, that's a problem. Like Gino was fantastic defensively this year. Uh, and that's not, you know, just the, the highlight plays and all that stuff that, that we saw this year. It's just, he was just solid through and through all year long at third base. Um, and that's after just a, an absolute, terrible terrible season uh defensively in which you know like you said the reds were trying to put him at shortstop and it was awful he just looked so out of place that's not his position he should not be you know usually we see guys going from shortstop to third base but not third base to shortstop um and so you just you don't do that uh suarez this year 236 332 459 with a 130 uh 131 wrc plus he was worth 4.1 f4 that's after a year in which he slashed 198 286 428 with a 84 wrc plus and was worth negative 0.1 f4 it's four wins better or uh 4.2 wins better than he was last year now dude cal raleigh which i mean yeah no cal look i'm not saying that it should be like one or the other i think they should both co-win it honestly because cal cal had a 47 wrc plus last year he was awful and defensively speaking he was also not what he is this year you know and so look i just think that the both of those guys took huge leaps obviously cal's a little bit different because this was his first year actually being good at the major league level and i get what you're saying from that but i also think that we shouldn't overlook gino here going from what he was last year and even the year before that in the shortened season to what he was this year you just it's very rare to see that actually no I'd say put it to a vote, like a poll or something, but I, I don't like the results for you. I, so I, I, th- I think a lot of people, no, I think a lot of people will pick Cal. I, I don't have any problem I saying that. I think everybody would pick Cal. Is there any other person that you thought of besides Gino and Cal? No, I think I think those are the two obvious ones, right? Like, is there anyone else that I'm, I'm overlooking here? I mean, nobody no. comes to mind. 
Yeah, I don't think so. Like, because, like, Kelnick didn't take the step forward that we all thought. Um, you know, Julio doesn't count because he was a rookie this year. Was like, so mm-hmm. that doesn't, yeah. Trammell a no. little bit at the beginning, but not really overall. Toro took a step back. Torrens took a step back. Yeah. Uh, Sam Haggerty, I guess, but... Yeah. JP not, that's was, not someone that's going to compete with Cal and, and Gino in this situation for me. No. JP's pretty much the same guy that he was last year and Frazier was took a step back and Winker took a step back. Uh Haniger took a step back and you know that's pretty much it. Like the pitchers were all more or less what we thought or a little bit worse than we thought. Um I guess you could say I, I don't know, you feel like Logan Gilbert vastly no nah, he didn't take he did he didn't take a massive step forward this year he took some steps forward at times but there were also times where he took steps back as well so yeah you know i i, I feel like overall like he kind of stayed neutral mm-hmm. just big picture I don't feel wise, like, but and i don't feel like you can take kirby or or julio um or andres munoz i feel like you can't pick any of them because this was for the most basically their first year i mean i know Munoz yeah, had maybe. a little bit Maybe uh, Munoz, loop. maybe Matt Festa. M- Matt Festa is another guy yeah. that, yeah, that you Festa can throw in there. Probably. Yeah, yeah Festa is yeah. probably third. Swanson? I mean, he was pretty good last year, though. Swanson, yeah, yeah. But I think I don't think there's anyone that, that would be in that same tier as, at least for me, Cal and, and Gino are. Uh, but you seem to think that like Cal's in a, in a tier of his own, which is fine. I totally get that. I totally get what your reasoning is for that. I just think that we shouldn't overlook Gino here and what he did this season because that is remarkable. Um, that is... Then just make him your MVP, you joker. I th- I think I think we all know who the MVP is going to be. And uh, yeah, Cal Raleigh again. Yeah. Like just, geez, Louise, Cal Raleigh's going to win every. What did he win yesterday? He won, uh, or not yesterday? It was the day before yesterday. What what did we not do? Yet. What what was the one that he won? I don't even remember the own our own awards that we're doing at this point. Yeah, Jeez. Oh, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, Cal's probably going to win you know quite a few of these right like because like cal was just fantastic this year and also what he was able to do at the end of the season i mean how could you not go with cal raleigh how can he not be the first guy that pops in or one of the first guys that pops into your mind for really any of these positive awards not not the negative ones but the the positive awards for sure like he is uh he's fantastic would he would he win the platinum glove for the team if we did that Ooh. Well, it's really just like him and and Gino, because like JP t- kind of took a step back defensively this year. Still pretty good, Julio. Yeah, still pretty good, Julio. Yeah, but Julio, like, uh, I don't know. Julio was hurt at time. I mean, Gino was too, but eh. I think they probably all played roughly the same number of games. Did they? Yeah. Julio maybe five or six games less than than Gino, but. Yeah, I think pretty close to the same number of games and Cal because he got sent down and he, well, I mean he's a catcher so that naturally he's going to play fewer games but yeah it'll probably be Raleigh <laughs> or Gino because uh, I feel like yeah. France Frazier and JP all took at least minor steps back so yeah yeah anyways really 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 uh, disappointed with Adam Frazier's defense this year like it was it wasn't terrible but it wasn't like I mean, when he came up, like last year, wasn't he like 99th percentile and outs above average or something at second base? And then. Yeah, he was not very good. He just wasn't that this year. So, yeah, that was really disappointing. Um, All right. So, uh, yeah, we'll continue our awards. Um, uh, Or biggest surprise was uh, was Cal, by the way. I just remembered. Ah. Biggest surprise. Biggest surprise. Uh, definitely big and definitely a surprise. Uh, the old big dumper. Uh, so, um, yeah, so we'll have more awards coming up uh, next week. I think we're going to be taking a couple days off from the show as well uh, towards the end of the week. We'll let you guys know all about that. Uh, but we'll be continuing our awards. We got, you know, best defender, best reliever, best starting pitcher, MVP, all that good stuff. Uh, we'll be going through all of that later on next week. But for now, that's going to do it for our show. 
And that's going to do it for our show for the whole week. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners podcast. For Colby Patnode, I'm Titan Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez, that's C-A-N-E-G-N-Z-L-Z, and Colby at CPAT11, that's C-P-A-T-1-1. Uh, you can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. And thank you again for making us your first listen. Now make your second listen, the Locked On MLB podcast. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and unique perspective on every team. And the biggest stories around the league follow the number one daily league-wide podcast locked on mlb on the odyssey app youtube and wherever you get your podcasts just like us and with that have yourself a beautiful baseball day and we'll see you next week peace